In this video, we'll learn a few rules for calculating derivatives, namely the power rule and the derivatives of sums, differences, and constant multiples. These rules will give us shortcuts for finding derivatives quickly without needing to resort to the old limit definition of derivative. In this video, we'll only do statements of the rules and some examples. There won't be any proofs or justification for why the rules hold. Instead, these proofs will be in a separate later video. Let's start with some basics. First of all, if we have a constant, c, and we will have the function f of x equals c, so if I graph that, it's just going to be a straight horizontal line. So the derivative, df dx, ought to be 0, because the slope of the tangent line of this straight line is just 0. Another simple example is the derivative of the function f of x equals x. So again, if I draw the graph, it's just going to be a straight line with slope 1. And so the tangent line for this straight line will also have slope 1. And the derivative, f prime of x, has to be always equal to 1. These two simple examples are actually special cases of the power rule, which is one of the most useful rules for calculating derivatives. So the power rule says that if you have the function y equals x to the n, where n is any real number, then you can find the derivative dy dx simply by pulling that exponent n down and multiplying it in the front and then reducing the exponent by 1. So for example, if you want to calculate the derivative of y equals x to the 15th, dy dx here is just going to be 15 times x to the 15 minus 1 or 14. The second example, f of x equals the cube root of x, might not immediately look like an example where we can apply the power rule. But if we rewrite it by putting the cube root in exponential notation as x to the one-third, now we can apply the power rule. We bring the one-third down and multiply it on the front, and we reduce the exponent of one-third by one. Well, one-third minus one is negative two-thirds. So we found the derivative here using the power rule. We could rewrite it if we want to using exponent rules as one over three x to the two-thirds. Either answer is good. In the third example, g of x is one over x to the 3.7. Again, we need to do a little rewriting before we can apply the power rule. So I'm gonna rewrite g of x as x to the minus 3.7 using exponent rules. Now I can find dg dx by pulling down the negative 3.7, multiplying in the front, and now I have to reduce negative 3.7 by 1. So I subtract 1, that gives me x to the negative 4.7. Again, I can rewrite this if I wish as negative 3.7 over x to the 4.7. It's important to notice that in all these examples, and in fact, in any example where the power rule applies, the variable x is in the base, and the exponent is just a constant, just a real number. The constant multiple rule says that if c is just a constant real number, and f is a differentiable function, then the derivative of c times f of x is just c times the derivative of f of x. In other words, when we take the derivative, we can just pull a constant outside of the derivative sign. Let's use this rule in an example. If we want to take the derivative of 5x cubed, that's the same thing as 5 times the derivative of x cubed. And now using the power rule, we can bring down the 3 and get 15x squared. f and g are differentiable functions, 
then the derivative of f of x plus g of x is the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. Similarly, for a difference, if f of g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of the difference is just the difference of the derivatives. Now let's use all these rules together to calculate the derivative of this polynomial. To find dy dx, we can use the sum and difference rule to calculate the derivative of each term separately. Now using the constant multiple rule and the power rule, we can bring out the 7, bring down the 3, get an x squared here. Similarly, for the next term, 5 times 2 times x to the 1, 4 times the derivative of x, which is just 1, and the derivative of a constant 2 is just 0. So simplifying, we get 21x squared minus 10x plus 4. And notice that the derivative of the original polynomial is just another polynomial of one less degree. In this video, we use some shortcuts to calculate the derivatives of various functions, especially polynomials. If you're interested in seeing where these rules come from, how they're derived from the limit definition of derivative, then look for another video coming soon on proofs.